Okay, thank you, Sonalika and um, Omics Logic Group for inviting me. And uh, welcome to all the participants. And uh, I will give you a myself is Sanjeev, and uh, I'm the director in BioCost Life Sciences. We do a lot of computations and a um, lot of uh, research in computational biology, genomics, basically. And we are based in Bangalore, uh, about 13 years old company. So with that, I will uh, introduce you with very basic single cell and spatial transcriptomics and other data types. <clears throat> so let me start. So this is the presentation flow. Let me check my pen is working. Yes. Fine. So this will be the presentation flow. I will give you NGS in journal uh, because many steps overlap with even single cell. So I will make a background quickly and uh, eight to 10 minutes. Then I will tell you single cell, what, why, and methods and analysis. Mm -hmm. Can I move it? To Fine. And then single cell transcriptome, uh, basically single cell RNA sequencing, and then a spatial single cell. I will give you the basics, and I will also try to get to the very you know uh, new ones in the field with the very tentative layman kind of explanations how it is. Then single cell epig epigenetics, uh, basically ATAC sec, which is basically adapted from the bulk uh, epigenetics protocols to the single cell. Then I will try if time permits to run some of the tools and give you demo and tell about them. So in basic, when we are talking about NGS, uh, if you see the history for Sanger methods and somewhere DNA microarrays, some of us, we have very widely worked on them. And uh, that was the very high throughput first time. And then after that, the field was revolutionized by Illumina sort uh, sequencing, which came somewhere around 2008. Then now we are on the single molecule sequencing and single cell, which is the third generation. Now, if you see here, various protocols, uh, if you see here, these are all DNA. And there are, this side is RNA protocols. So we can analyze a lot of like variants, the targeted like exome, add glycons, and then we have basically epigenetics protocol, single cell, and a lot of RNA transcriptomics and targeted RNA and small RNAs. So if we look at the whole bunch of analysis required for the uh, genetics. Now, if you see, this is basically a epigenetics block here, which is in red. So if you see, mostly these are the regulatory elements like MNSEC, <coughs> DNAs, PIRASEC, CHIPSEC, and then uh, occupancy of uh, you know, DNA, which is ATAC-SEC which is basically assays with transposes accessible chromatin, what is accessible. And if you see the, this side, basically this blue side, this is basically the transcriptome, uh, RNA-seq. So, and you can see the transcripts, variants and mutations. So with the now invent of these NGS protocols, we can analyze the whole spectrum of uh, DNA from epigenetics changes to regulatory changes and transcriptome. Now there are hundreds, in fact, more than hundreds of protocols. Now if you see here, this is basically dominated by gene expression, RNA biology and genome regulation. But you see a lot of small, small new protocols like including single cells, they are coming up. So there are so many protocols are coming, which use which are using NGS. 
Now, if we see at the NGS flow, basically it is uh, three steps. Prepare your library sequence and then analyze. So it depends what is your uh, biological material uh, which you are trying to address. So it can be single cell or it can be a bulk. And the protocol uh, first extract the DNA, then library preparation matters on what is your uh, biology question and what is your material like single cell or bulk or RNA or seq Then you amplify it and then sequence like Illumina or MESEC. And once it is sequenced, the raw image comes. And then, one, then after that, the read comes here. And these reads are aligned to the reference genome here. And once they are analyzed and aligned, then down the line, when you are analyzing, then you can see various, you know, protocol depending on your analysis, RNA seq transcriptome or variants or protein DNA interaction epigenetics. Can you can infer? And then downstream analysis like networks and all kinds of things can be done. So basically, this is the NGS flow. And this is a common flow, most of the protocols, including single cell or. So these are the sequencer. I'm just rushing through the briefly. Uh, you may be knowing all these things like Illumina. Everybody knows uh, specific biosciences, long reads, Oxford Nano. Four, which is also long read and there are three types actually short read long read and direct read is, has come so these are the three types of sequencing mechanisms now the what is the basic philosophy you take the fragments so these are the fragments and they are break they are broken and then they are sequenced and once you sequence the, uh, these are called reads and you get the reads now these reads here you can see they are barcoded basically index uh, here in bulk uh, you know rna or chip seek they are basically to decipher the samples you can run in together and then later you can demultiplex so this is basically but later you will see in single cell we will see we will need different kind of tags so once it is tagged, then you have the read, you can sequence from the one end or you can sequence from the both the end. So this is your fragment, which was fragmented and amplified in PCR. So you can take a single end read or you can take both the ends. So you get the pair end reads. And this part basically is not sequenced. That's, that's the way the, these NGS protocols win over Sanger sequencing, because you don't have to sequence from one end to other. And it's statistically, because you have millions of millions of reads, so they cover whole genome. That's the idea where the, we are winning over cost, winning over time. Now, once you have sequenced either both ends or single end, then you get this FASTAQ file. Once you get a FASTAQ file, which has basically the four lines, so this is your read, one end or both end. If it is both end, two files will get one end. Uh, read one and read two and then you have the quality once you have the quality which is spread quality check it and it has to be above 30 and nowadays sequencers are very much good so even people are taking 40 it depends on your protocol like variants it has to be higher depth and better quality uh, in chip seek you can survive with the lesser one so once you once we have got the faster queue and with better quality then the next one is we align to the reference genome this is your reference and these reads are aligned to the reference and once it is aligned you can compare like here you can see the variants so once they are compared then we can analyze variants or other protocols the other protocols are like i have told you the variant detection so you see the statistically how much is the coverage and with statistically how much is the p-value then you can see whether g's variant a is there here or not this is basically your variant detection the other one is the rna seq this is the bulk one then you have say sample one and sample two 
as you know, this is the digital compared to the fluorescence microarray. So here you see the pile, say for example, these are the 20 and the sample two, this is say three. So now if you see this is gene one, so this gene one here, uh, you can see is the expressed in sample one, but it is not in sample two, right? So <clears throat> based on the p-value, so you can detect RNA-seq. Uh, this is uh, transcriptome, the expression, gene expression. And then in chip-seq, more than count, we are bothered about the pattern. If it is a pattern, then it means the protein is binding on a DNA. As you know, the transcription factors in it, how the protein interacts with DNA is very much analyzed using the chip-seq. So the, we see the pattern. So basically, the, these three kind of protocols are mainly the applications of NGS were there in bulk. Now, as I go to the single cell, before that, let me tell you the what is the mRNA or RNA set. This is the bulk one, just uh, to give you the background. So you have a sample of interest, disease, tumor, or something. Then you have a RNA molecules, they are fragmented. Then here you see they are basically adapters are added. They are the barcodes. And then when you sequence, so you have a read one and read two, and then you have the adapters. And once you remove these adapters, so you can get read one, and this is read two, which are aligned to the genome. And there are some complexities when you align on the, you know, because uh, cDNA when taken from uh, RNA, mRNA, there are the breaks, which are introns are spliced out in that, that I'm not going to discuss. Once it is aligned and then we can do the data analysis like DSEC2, then HT count and various other methods, mm, Lima and all kinds of things. So you can use differential expression, variant calling, annotations, and novel transcripts and editing. Now, with this background, I have covered very quickly the NGS uh, protocols. Now we are going to go to single cell now. That's what we are um, today's uh, talk. So I hope you have, you know, got the idea what is the NGS, how it is different in single cell, that will be, we will see. So if we look at the layman type of uh, analogy, suppose this is a kind of a big game, like the Olympic, then you see hundreds of countries and, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of players. Now, how you evaluate a player performance and how you identify. So let me say that player is like a cell. So first one is pull a player out, okay? So that is isolation, correct? Now, once you pull a player out, how are you going to analyze it? Now you have to tag it. First one is you have to identity, that is the player name, right? Then you have a country, which is its special location. And then what is the action, what he has won, that is basically his achievement, expression, in some sense you can analogically, you can compare. That is medals, what is his performance. Now you need three tags, right? One, two, and three, to identify the player name, which is something like a cell barcode, which are nothing but microparticles, beads. You might have heard in single cell, there are beads where there is a cell, then you have UMI, unique molecular identifiers. They are like a transcript, like your RNA, mRNA. And then you have a spatial location in some of the sequencing based spatial analysis. So with this, you know, layman example, how you infer anything, basically, especially in time access, any object in the nature, is something like that. So we have to analyze the cells also like that. Now, cells in multiple contexts, as in previous example, I have shown you a one player. Now, if you see here, they are in multiple dimensions. They work like environmental stimuli, like you can see a blue cell here. So let's see. And it goes in cell development, cell cycle, and a spatial context like a microenvironment in the tumor progression. And uh, so if you see the cell is not a static object like earlier we were you know, analyzing. 
So now if you see here that we are seeing the five dimensions, the first one, you have a discrete type. You have to see what kind of, of cells are there, right? So there may be a rare cell type. The other one is the continuous phenotype regulatory. So they get inflammatory and that kind of changes happens to the cell, even in they change their functionality when they are in a cancer or something like that. And then you have the temporal uh, at the time changes like stem cells, they differentiate into different kinds. So, and then vacillation when they are revisiting. So there are multiple dimensions. Then another one, once you have found a discrete types here, the cell types, then how you can map it back to the histological sections from where they are got. So that is basically a special position. As you know, it's very important like in tumor and um, EMT and that kind of, what kind of collagens and how they are in matrix, how they are. So even in other contexts, it's very important. So I hope that gives you the background, like how it is important and what kind of cell multiple contexts are there and why people are trying to, you know, like single cell, spatial uh, and the trajectories and all kinds of things, because that's the way in for the whole, whole functionality. Now, why we need it? Now, if you see here, as you see adipose tissues, they are made up of different type of cells. So almost everywhere you will find tissues and organs. They are very different types of cells. They are made up of, and they interact. So then you have a now peripheral blood that is, now if you see on this, now, if you take an average here, none of the cell is basically depicted their behavior as a, by the, uh, by the averaging. That's why we cannot infer that what kind of, behavior is happening. For example, let me tell you a realistic situation we faced. So a few years back, we have a project which was a brain tissue of mouse. So there was a cell and they were dying basically in that particular disease. And there were so many cells. So let's say these are 100 and there were say five. So when we analyzed transcriptome, so this basically it was coming because it was cumulative bulk and because the cells were individually there, you know, individually very high, but when it comes bulk, it was coming because there were hundreds and they were dying. And this was the problem basically. And that time, let me tell you, we couldn't do single cell. It's a pretty old 2008, 10 project. So that time we realized how to capture only these cells transcriptome. And today I realized that it was very important so I hope you understand why it is needed in such uh, situations, especially brain where the, you know, the cells are very much localized in different uh, areas of the brain. So same way in the disease cases, you see, you will find a disease specific cells. Once you find disease specific cells, then you can infer what kind of, you know, you can have the targets or, you know, therap therapeutics, but it is important to decipher what kind of cells are. So the single cell analysis is enabling nowadays, uh, as it is coming, uh, very much to decipher these kind of questions which we could not address. Now, single cell, it was earlier also, if we look at the traditional single cell, it was microscopy, cytometry, nowadays, nowadays it is also there. I'm just rushing through some slides because I have a lot of things to cover. So you see, uh, the, the, the challenges were throughput and number of features we can, and the cost was very high. You can see 35 per cell, $35 and $1 even. So these things can be used, but how you scale it up to the genome wide. Uh, you can analyze few cells, hundreds and thousands, but how you can million and trillion cells, how can you analyze? That's the aim basically. Now, if you see, then the single cell platform came. Initially it was 2008 when the technology clicked and 2009 basically, uh, that was manual, Tang, that page nature paper. Then nowadays, like whatever 10X is using very much, DropSec and 10X. 
So you will see the nano droplets, uh, drop sec. So these are various, and the, these things will come again and again. So I will just go through. So basically, drop sec and the 10x, I will just explain some of them. Okay. So now uh, there are basically four types one is the fax, fluorescence activated cell sorting, droplet based, nano wall, and none. So if you see here, number of cells per assay, you can compare. Here it is high actually, but um, you can see th this is basically a very much widely used in a lot of publications, DropSec and the Chromium 10X technology. So you can see here, they are basically pretty high, not at the top most, but they are used. And they are droplet based. So I will explain you some of these concepts. Uh, here it is just these methods. So what is the flow? It will come again. And then, so let me just move to the next slide. It will come how it is done. Uh, it is another comparison slide. If you see in drop sec, so here you can see UMI and full length. So some are UMI and full length, some are not able to full length and that just three prime end or something like that. Um, let me just move. So what are the challenges before we go to you know, some of the technology, you know, technically explaining the things. Now, one first one is cell isolation. How you isolate the cell, it may, you know, change the behavior of the cell like magnetic or by mechanical force or by enzymatically. So that will change the course of the, your cell, it may change the behavior. So that is the one challenge. Another one is the amplification because you are at a single cell. So it is very small material. So how this amplification is done, that is another challenge. And the throughput, how you increase to, you know, thousands and thousands and million cells, how can you do so high throughput? So these are the basically the major three challenges, cell isolation, amplification, and parallel processing. How can you do various steps so that you can bring down the cost time and uh, on the same time, increase the throughput. Sorry, I got back. Now, next challenge is sensitivity versus. Sorry, sensitivity versus uh, how you can have the quality and quantity. So now, if you see smart check, it is manual. Here you can cover, uh, you know, genes. I will show you the matrix, but here you will drop some of the genes like, you know, the features, but this is high throughput. Now the next challenge is basically at the data level. So if you see the major problem is dropout events. Other one is because of dispersion, biological dispersion, because they are very different types of cells maybe there then high magnitude outliers may be there. But if you see, this is the one of the uh, challenge because when you see the matrix, which will come expression matrix, it is a lot of zeros. So it is very sparse and your gene may be expressing, but it may be dropped out. That is the another challenge, how to meet and minimize that particular problem. So uh, with this kind of introduction and challenges and why it is needed, let me get through the steps, how it is done, single cell sequencing. So the first step is cell isolation. So there are, you can see here, you can see here, there are various ways. So you can have, you know, manual, you can have fluorescence activated cell sorting here. Then you have, you can have uh, antibody based immuno, Panning, then you can have a magnetic based, then laser mm, capture, micro dissection, and then microfluids, which is drop sec and widely used. So let me take one, which is 10x and chromium they are using. This is uh, microfluids. Now here are two types. This is drop sec, if you see here. And he's, this is high throughput. The another one is targeted, and that is FEX, smart set two. 
So let me take this high throughput. Here, this is a basic flow. So first, through the ledger, you have separated the cells. Then this is drop set and or in drop. This is 10x chromium or smart set as on previous slide I've shown. Uh, this is less throughput, but both the ends are sequenced. So you can do more things, but the, th the throughput is less. Here, if you see, here only the three prime end is sequenced and you can detect some of the gene expression and things like that so this is the basically basic flow now these are the steps and i will explain you each one of them in little more detail so first you have a cell i told you then you disassociate with the cell isolation which i have shown you on the previous slide then this is the drop sec so your cell comes and your this is the droplets beads and they will encapsulate your cells so some are waste like empty it will go this is also one another problem and you know people are trying to minimize this the but the thing is your cell is come with the bead and once it is isolated your life then you have to lysis then you have to put a barcode on next slide i will explain you once you have done the barcode your library is prepared and it, then it goes for the sequencing and once sequencing is done, as I told you in NGS, then you get a FASTA Q file of your. Remember, as I told in the player example, now you see various tags, UMI, barcode, and you will see the other tags. So these tags are used later to segregate cell wise or transcript wise. That is the basically a main crux. So this is the drop sec, which I have told you. Now, if you see, just I will, I would like to, you know, explain you how is this uh, droplet works. So, if you see, this is the bead, basically. Then it has, you can see, PCR handle, cell barcode, and unique molecular identifier. Basically, it will catch your transcript. So, this is the droplet. Now, it has hydrogels and primers. It is packed with this this bead. Then, when cell comes here, then your when you lysis them, this is your mRNA transcripts. They will get attached to them, right? So you have three handles now: PCR handle, cell. So you can segregate cell from this and UMI. Basically, you can catch these particular things. So if you have cell one, two, three, four and then your library is prepared so that's the way in a droplet base the bead the sorry droplets are formed and how they capture your transcripts basically now this is uh, that first a i have explained you this is the bead now if you remember how you generate basically barcodes so you can generate there are different uh, ways like combinatorics and things like that. So 12 bases, you can generate so much and eight bases is for UMI. Remember, these are tags, unique tags. So this is the way how it is explained, like how many, which is around 65K. So you can analyze, you can tag so many cells, right? And the next one, a, this is the full flow whatever I explained. So you take your cells in your drop, then you get, you know, captured your uh, cells with the bead, then the mRNA is, again, I'm repeating just for sake of, uh, you know, understanding the full um, process, then it is attached to it. Once it is attached here, these are called stems, then you can do PCR, and then after sequencing, you get the file fast file your reads now when you get a fast file it will the, your reads will come like this after sequencing then you have two barcodes cell barcode in umi and this is anyway your sequence now based on barcode cell barcode you can segregate your transcripts in cell and based on your uh, umis you can the finally your matrix gene expression matrix for each gene you have a cell then you will have a count how many so cell one say like you have three so 
And like you have, a, here are the genes. So you can see some of the genes here. For example, uh, you have this and you have this here. So it is expressing in cell one and it is not expressing, it is there, the transcript is there that we have to see whether it is expressing or not. So finally, what you get is the expression matrix, which is different. If you remember expression matrix, let me uh, explain on the next slide. So we have come to the expression matrix. So, so far what I have uh, basically explained is uh, what is the single cell protocols, right? Now, if we apply, this is a single cell RNA-seq, you might have heard a lot. Now, if you see why it is needed, if you have a tissue, now it is a bulk expression. And here it is cell-wise expression. As I already I told you, like why it is needed when your cell-specific expression is needed in certain answering some, some of the biological questions. So it is very important in certain situation. Now, if you look at the um, RNA-seq, bulk RNA-seq, our matrix, expression matrix was like this. We have genes and then we have samples. You know, so we were telling, okay, disease sample, non-disease, normal sample, whether this gene is expressing or not, but we were not talking about the cell. But if you see in the, you know, uh, single cell, here you have a gene, then you have cells. So in this cell, basically this gene is not there by this cell. So these are the cells, cell two, which are responsible for gene A expression. So now we can uh, basically specify like these transcripts in particular gene, and these are the cells responsible. So please see carefully the difference in whatever the, your expression matrix comes. And this will go down the line for the analysis. So there are the basically the four steps in single cell RNA sequencing. Let me tell you the first one is the sample preparation, which I think we have already, uh, I have already talked about it. First, disaggregation of cell isolation and remove separating them mechanically, enzymatically, or filtering whatever way various ways are there. Then you get the single cell, then you use packs, droplets, and nano walls. Once you have got the cells, and uh, like I have shown you the droplets, then you add the barcode, cell barcode. Now, I hope you understand what is UMI and cell barcode, which are helping to segregate your transcripts and cells from where it is come. Now, you can have fragmentation or fragmentation, PCR. Then library pre like preparation, which is three prime or five prime, or it can be full because this is 10X and there are the other protocols. 10X only, you know, sequence the three prime end. Then you sequence, it can be pair end or single end, mostly the pair end nowadays because the cost has come down. Now, the third step is once, as I told you, you get the file, then you demultiplex it cell wise, then you align to the reference genome and then you get the matrix. Then after that, you can have the various analysis here that I will show you down the line, a few of them in Suret when I will show you the R code. So this is the basic flow of RNA sequencing. Now in the data analysis down, you can uh, <clears throat> special uh, tissue reconstruction. Yes, that is done from the sequencing, in fact, uh, from SCRNSF. Suret is doing. Then you can do clustering and marker identification. Uh, what is the expressions are happening? Then you can have a dimension reduction and see the cells. The another one is you can see on the timeline how the trajectories of your cells, how they are propagating in pseudo time. So these are the various analysis can be done with your single cell data analysis. Now, in summary, we can say once you have a, as a bioinformatician, you have expression matrix, which are cell versus gene. Remember, this is not sample versus gene as in bulk. Then you have a feature selection. Yes, you have to sort out, you know, what are the differentially expressed and, you know, that's why you can see some is, which may not be useful. You have to check it out. 
then dimensionality reduction. And after that, you can see cell cell distance, you can see various things, especially map them or cluster them and networks and all that kind of things can be done. Now, this is all flow which I have explained. Uh, so to add to that the previous slide, uh, this is the full flow slide. Then you can have differential expressions. Then you can have cell cell interaction networks. You might have seen in various nature in other papers. <clears throat> then you can have association, association, association with sample phenotypes. What healthy versus disease? What are the cells? And then you can have regulatory networks. Now, um, I have uh, done so far the single cell RNA seq. Now, I will show you the basic, uh, you know, various technologies and protocols for spatial single cell. This is the basic thing in emerging area, I think, very much. Again, just to see the analogy. Now, the picture is the perfect. If you take a, your picture of your house, then you know where is what, right? So, the picture is the best. Um, uh, for a spatial location. But the problem is you cannot take picture of all the RNA and whole genome wide. And this is like, you know, FIS or um, in situ hybridization or fluorescence based. But what we are looking at the genome wide means can we cover the whole genome? Now, if you do the sequencing, we are lost. Like we have taken from here and fill in a box. That's what the, you have taken the cells and you lose the from where it came. So what is the one basic method can be done? You tag them, basically. Now another barcode will come, which is especially in tissue section. So we can put another tag. And once they are mixed, now I can locate from my tissue if I have a section. So I have, say, for example, this or this. I know from where it came. So that is the one of the idea how the spatial uh, sequence uh, mapping is done basically in single cells. So we tag spatially and then we can infer them. Now, this is timeline. So if you see many here, 10x chromium, uh, they are basically dropless um, inside to capture technologies mixture. And then you see a lot of like this is uh, Marquis or uh, basically SACFIS, these are imaging based. So if you see the green ones, so uh, like if you see here, in, there are some are sequencing based like star map <clears throat> and uh, like TomSec, uh, there's GeoSec here. So uh, basically four or five types of, uh, you know, uh, spatial mapping technologies and they have a some good, some bad, nothing is ideal. So it, this is a very cluttered slide. Um, just to check, um, um, it, yes, I'm there. Everybody is there. Hello, Sonalika. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah, you are there with me, right? Okay, yes, fine. Yes, good. Yeah. yeah, good. And I hope you are following, right? Okay, fine. So now if you see the spatial analysis, this is a bit cluttered slide, but it has everything and I will uh, take slices of it to explain, but let me show you the whole uh, view. So we have a, these are the imaging based, if you see the first top left, and then high throughput cell sequencing based, and then these are the hybrid, like you take imaging profile, like Suret, it takes the um, SCRNA sec and it takes the uh, amazing profile, uh, basically the FIS, and then it can reconstruct. So the, these are various kind of like in Tom sec, if you see even bulk RNA sec is used, not even single cell. And then you have the somehow the spatial data uh, triangulated in, you know, that information is embedded to that this kind of technology. So they, there are various emerging technologies which are using bulk rna seq and from, you know, that cell atlas or somewhere it is given and then how to merge, integrate data or use the drop sec 
and uh, SCRNSEC data and ISC face or some imaging data and they re reconstruct the spatial location of those cells. So now if we, uh, the, basically there are four types. One is in silico, as I told you, they take the RNA sequencing, SCRNA and the FIS data and they try to re uh, map it uh, spatially. Now, but cannot match, coordinate, and tend to simplify. Basically, that's what simplify and you get that kind of thing. The next one is laser capture, micro dissection. In that, you have a limitation. This is few cells you can do. Then in situ, this is an imaging based. Uh, so you have phase or various four or five time, four or five types are there. And then you have a RNA imaging. This is also, I think, pretty much emerging. Detects only targeted transcripts. So everyone has a good and some bad pros and cons. Now, if you look at it, the four types I have told you. So first you take RNA-seq. It's just a flow to just show you in the image. The previous slide, it explores the previous slide. And then you have a in situ hybridization. And then, uh, there is a surette here, which is hidden behind it. Now it will basically, you can take this part and integrate with this. And it is very easy pipeline in surette. In fact, you can explore it. The next one is basically the LCM sec and geosec based. There you can see it is a sequencing based uh, using the barcodes. And the third one, it is amazing based. Basically, uh, this is uh, MAPIS, uh, which is basically multiplex error robust FIS. Uh, this is also pretty much um, you know used. So this is amazing based. And the next one, the last one, fourth one is you can see here is spatial IDs. The barcodes are added. You take the slices and you add the barcodes and then sequence. So basically the four types, the one computational methods, first one, LCM based, then RNA amazing, and then inside to sequencing methods. So four types of, now there are two things we have talked about. One is you have a single cell sequencing here. The other part, which I have shown you, this is a spatial. So now a good amount of challenges how you can integrate this data. You will see a lot of papers and how, so that you can better infer the uh, biology, whatever the questions you are inferring, if you, these two things, how they can be merged. And there's the various, uh, you know, uh, technologies. If you see here, LCM. So if you see the gene measured are very high, but if you see the x-axis is cells, and this is gene measured, okay, throughput of cells or spots. So now if you see they are very good in sensitivity, they can measure genes, but you can analyze only very less cells. But if you see the other, they are pros and cons. And these, some are just computational based. These are the algorithms here, you can see. And the other many, if you are seeing these things, there are imaging based. Murphy's four, five, six, it is evolving. So uh, all kind of these technologies with plus, minus, and that kind of thing, various things are there. And this is the uh, barcoding strategy, which I'm not going to go into deep, but uh, various phase, SM phase, MAR phase, and that kind of thing, how the barcoding as I have explained to you. Now, what we have done so far to summarize, we did the bulk RNA set, then we have a single cell and we got the, you see here, we got the gene and sample wise. And then here we got the matrix. Then we have a special section we have taken and we have mapped either through imaging or through computationally, we have reconstructed the tissue sections with the cell mapping. So we have covered these three things. Okay, now, uh, let me get to the single cell epigenetics, SC80A cell, uh, because it's a simple one and it is adapted uh, for the single cell analysis. There are ChIP-seq and other protocols. Now, when you look at the epigenetic profile, 
you have a three regions basically if you have the chromatin accessibility then you have a protein dna interactions then you have a dna methylation basically like in cancer and things like that now if you see for chromatin accessibility you have mnas dnas pyrae and new one which is atac which is assays for transposase accessible chromatin and i'm going to cover this one for the epigenetics which is adapted basically for the single cell and i will let will give you the tools and things like that now if you, here is the comparison all uh, basically the chromatin accessibility the first chip sec uh, that also you can use dna's at sec and mnas and pyrex now if you can see here no sonification is needed as it is needed here it is just endonuclease K kn5 then you have a tagmentation so this is just a comparison slides of various uh, you know things and in fact uh, they are not exclusive they help each other you cannot answer all the questions for one protocol basically so what is atac this is assays for transposes accessible chromatin so it will uh, give you what is the chromat chromatin is accessible as you know that is what is the regulation happens so you have a this is basically uh, not uh, uh, what you say like uh, mutated kind of uh, uh, transposes nuclease five and it is like a cut and paste when it comes it will cut and paste your fragment here and that it will tagmentation so it will basically like capturing your accessible chromatin once it comes so you have barcode primers here and then you can see we have got that segment we can filter and take it out then we amplify and then you put barcodes whatever uh, you know these barcodes and umis are very important to later access the particular information or the segment what then it goes to the next generation sequencing so basically you can use this um, it i'm not talking about single cell it is basically a normal even normal now if, if you in a layman language if you can tag you can take a single cell chromatin and then you can have the like scrna set you can tag single cell here then again you can do similar thing as we have done in single cell rna seq now what is the prone uh, uh, pros of this it is very fast in fact simple and sensitive you can see three hours otherwise it takes days and it works on many cell types uh, and requires no sonification phenol uh, chloroform like pyrex you and antibodies you know these all processes in chip seek or pyre or chip, they create the bias and the the last thing which is it is modified for single cell analysis which it is very difficult for the other that's why you see 10x chromatin uh, they have used this protocol the other cons is basically it is cells must be optimized if you have two less and two high cells it won't give the good performance and you can do all kind of uh, some of these uh, you know epigenetics analysis nucleogen mapping transcription factor occupancy identification of novel enhancers in deep study of the genomic profiles so mm, this is somewhat um, uh, you can see in the picture basically what i have explained so here is atasec and then after that you can uh, see the picture no uh, sorry uh, peaks here and on the with your reference genome so you can see where it is binding uh, basically where it is binding the your enhancer in something like uh, this kind of questions you can answer like suppose it is a healthy your here is your binding your enhancer and suppose the mutation happens it doesn't bind okay so you can address such disease whether see it is epigenetics and whether it is binding or not binding so that kind of questions you can answer with this kind of protocol what some of the things i'm telling you can do many other things basically now uh, till here 
uh, we are 10 minutes let me i think we will be able to finish so um, i have covered quite a few things uh, three four things now there are tools right you have suret monoclay and snap it uh it, one tool i have taken there are many actually so i will explain you quickly what can be done with these tools and how they work in fact this suret was the first and very famous and it is used so basically what they do they demultiplex and read alignment and uh, not the suret it is done by cell ranger that next slide i will explain then basically they will quantify and data filter and data normalize once they normalize then you can see the reads and cells that matrix comes once you get that matrix you can do so you see here genes and cells then you can do pca umap t sign a you know reduction you can have hierarchical clustering and then you can have marker genes detection right differentially expressed genes and which cells and things basically this is what mostly and then you have a monoclet 3 which gives you the dynamic gene expression in inference the trajectories rna velocity basically so the flow is the first part as you know i have told you the fast q file you get from the sequencer then you have align cell barcode and umi counting is done then you get the matrix uh, this is the very computationally intensive process and you need a big machines and the cell ranger will give you this and i think it's freely available then you can use it then once you get the feature barcode matrix then you can do cell identification as already we have talked different types of cell you can have a trajectories and uh, you can have the differentially expressed genes so suret here the monoclonal three and suret can do this in fact this suret has for uh, ATSX single cell analysis also they have incorporated and in fact in, it is evolving they are adding uh, day by day new features whatever we have explained the five six dimensions so if you see in suret even uh, analysis of spatial data sets you see they map if you have availability of a spatial data set it can be mapped to your single cell RNA sequencing data or chipset data then you can do other things like quality rna differential gene expressions and uh, the next one is monoclay there you can see basically the trajectory it came and this is a snap atac that um, mm, uh, i won't show you in the running but here you can see the main part others are normalization even you see in chipsic but the differentiating part for single cell is you have the clustering cell wise and this is the basically the main part peak calling uh, where the binding is happening rest is the different analysis you can see pseudo time and everything once it, you have a data single cell you can run on anything so now let me give you a, a quick demo okay so hello everybody is there hello yes sir yes sir yes. Please go ahead we are following yes sir yes so uh, i will just quickly share the another screen so where is the so basically this is the re studio and uh, easily you can you know build uh, are you able to see my screen this hello can you see my code yes sir yes sir yes sir you can see your code code yes, sir. so this is the basically let me show you the first sure it oh, it was running so just to save time so basically how quickly let me show first you take the suret and this is the r studio you can install uh, i'm on uh, ubuntu 20.04 uh, so these are the some of the libraries which are used by it and it will tell so let me run a step by step okay 
So these are and then package suret if you are aware of the R and the packages. So easily and if you go in tools here and you say install packages and uh, you can just type here suret and it will come just click and say install is not that but you may uh, stuck in some dependencies uh, then you have to resolve them basically i have to go to the code directory so fine then first read the data and uh, let me tell you this data i have downloaded it is already data in that site and it comes for the cell ranger 10x data library and uh, this is like that matrix bar course umis and there are three files basically uh, which is, is going to use so uh, we have taken the data now we, uh, it has one three seven one four features you can you can look at it here if you look at it here it is showing the output here what is going to come and the figures will come in the right panel then <clears throat> so now you can see here like uh, zoom plot your data here so different kind of like various things you can plot okay so and let me see the other these are just features of how your data is scattered and things like that uh, then the first step you have to normalize the data and you can use various methods if you just see the help on this you have diff different parameters so the first step is after first step read the data which is from 10x cell ranger it comes just to summarize the uh, you know the steps then here basically the here uh, you normalize the data once it is normalized then you have find variable features basically it will find the your uh, like genes and features and that then you can see that let me just plot and i can show you uh, something like this so variance average expression it will show then after that um, you have to scale the data just to you know It will take a while it is done then you have to do the dimension reduction linear this is pca or u map it supports all here is a pca you can say u map also so it will support those various dimensional you know reductions then you can plot this is pca see here it is pca here okay which i have highlighted you can have u map and so it will show you different pc1 and pc2 it is showing two principal components if you are aware like you know dimensional re reductionality the first two three components of uh, principal component analysis they give you most of the data that's the idea actually it's something like you have a lot of data and you have segregated the main data into the one corner of your room suppose it is scattered on your house on the floor then you choose the what is the important and pile up in the one corner in a layman language i am telling you principal component analysis is something like that so it will your important you know information it will in first two three components it will segregate that's the dimensional re reductionality okay then you can see the heat map these are just you know this is pc earlier you saw the different plot it is a different plot then you have the another heat map like you know so you can see the various ways uh, this was giving some okay i want to show you the u map just wait a while it is processing it takes time so now you can see here 
now you have got the your cells basically eight types so this is u map right uniform manifold approximation and projection if you are aware of that and mainly the u map and sinity u map is in some cases it works better than sinity so now you have eight clusters basically these are the clusters you can see the clusters eight clusters here then you can see the cells here the next one uh, now that is the differential gene expression it has shown the head if you uh, you know no here let me highlight with the mouse this one you can see it has given you the basically these are the markers they are calling it not differential basically the markers so you see the gene list here then you see the log fc p values like you have seen in a bulk uh, rna seq and the cell wise it will be so uh, basically that's what he's doing now there are eight clusters in markers the gene it basically it is attaching the genes now you can see the genes differentially expressed genes so there are eight clusters uh, five six seven eight so uh, i think we i can show this only in a two more minutes i think we are running out of time anyway we started five minutes late hello sonalika do i have still time yes sir please go ahead yes sir please go ahead so another five minutes let i want to show you the trajectory also so uh, now you can see here uh, if you see the code we we have given uh, you know we have given two genes here uh, cd79a and ms4a1 now you see the expression of label in the which cluster it is you see them in the cluster 3 and here in this so you can see the gene and you can see the cells in that cluster cell wise clusters so you can see that this gene basically if you infer the information so this is the gene and you will find the cluster of cells right this is the cluster number three now this gene is expressing in that cluster so that's the way you infer that where the genes are which kind of cells that gene is being expressed now, if you see the code here, um, we have given these two genes, and then again he is giving the another gene. Where I'm okay. So this is the another cells now. No, sorry, genes. Now, if you see here in the, it is expressing NKF seven in the fourth cluster very high. Remember the clusters are cell specific. So now you can find how they, so here, if you see this PF4, basically the cluster eight, these cells are responsible for the majorly expression of PF4. That's what we wanted to find out, right? So that's what you can get now here. Um, you can see, uh, you know, the other, uh, heat maps means various ways that is the violent plot now you can see the you have the clusters here i will show you the uh, one so now you see any particular gene you can take this one so you can see this is in this particular cluster so like that you can see the heat map like this particular gene is here this type of cells in here lyz here and how much is the other place expression majorly these cells but it is expressing in this so uh, now uh, I think you can realize like how uh, uh, we can get the cell specific information uh, from these data, um, right? So uh, cell identity clusters. So you have genes and then you have the four class. Now you can see which genes are where, how they are expressing, right? The top 0, 1, 2, there are seven, eight clusters in the other side. So what I, I want to demonstrate you that 
most of the in, the things which i have talked about is just naming the you know cells you can see here so different cell types uh, clusters eight clusters and you can see i you know b b cells and k cells and cd40 like that so whatever i talked you in the uh, basically in the presentation now you can see most of the things coming here right and uh, monoclay i just run source it fully and i want to show you the basic you can have you know trajectories so uh, let me it takes a while uh, i can take questions by the time it the window will come if you have any please go ahead if any one of you are having some query some question you can reach me later also let me write my email id you can take s a n j -E -E v dot b i o c o s biocos at gmail dot com that is my id you can you know reach me any tool or anything you have uh, uh, please let me have any questions you have or anything else whatever i have covered so far now one window will come i will select one cell and show you the pseudo trajectory that's it it takes a while let it come anybody has any question or would like to ask something specific hello everybody is there Hello, Sonalika. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are here. We are here. There is a question that came out from uh, Zara Kamas. Uh, mm -hmm. And the question is, can we use suret analysis for bacterial cells? Uh, yes, I think you can. Yes, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. yes please go ahead yes basically you can use there is a uh, i don't think in fact the data what i have taken is uh, it is some bacterial data only uh, the example what i am showing you uh, uh, bacterial or uh, some i think uh, brain but yes you can use in fact they have the data example data for it and uh, there is one more question related to sirit professor and uh, Daniel asks, what package uh, or what library uh, is similar to Suret that can be used in Python environment? Um, actually, I am not sure about Python because I hardly work on that, but um, I'm not sure actually, but uh, I don't know whether Suret can be used on Python or not but uh, i have no idea actually i don't work in python but i'm sure i think there must be adaptation with wrappers uh, maybe offline i can answer if you don't find or i can tell you some package which is used in python if you approach me but right now um I have no idea actually in Python whether it works or not, or the other packages. Thank you, thank you, Professor. And uh, I'm looking for any other queries. Please type in your questions in the chat box. I will read it out to Professor. Okay, there is a question from Radha Krishnan, and the question is: uh, How is the cell sorting done using microfluidics? Uh, is it confirmed or validated? 
and how can we know which cell type is where okay mm, so for that so let me finish this i need to go to i have uh, you know briefly covered that uh, how the in droplets basically uh, okay so just one second let me so here the screen has come so you can choose basically which one trajectory you want this has learned the graph basically so for example if i take this so you have to take the start one so i have taken the start and one i am taking so i have done now once it it is taken So, uh, if you have taken this is the trajectory pseudo time. So, I started here. If you remember, I marked it here multiple cells. Now, how it is. So, the basic you can refine it in fact much more refined it is when you set the parameters but this is the way you can see the trajectory in the monoclet 3 this is monoclet 3 uh, with this uh, let me come to that question so basically what happens in the droplet you uh, let me let me stop this so if you go to that to answer that question i hope you are able to see my ppt again yes sir so uh, basically i just So here, this is actually microfluidic device. So from one side, the cells are pumped and the other side, the beads are basically in the oil and it encapsulate the cells inside the bead. It can miss also. So the basically whatever it has encapsulated, like you can see there's a one bead, one cell type. This is cell, this is bead the another cell so different types of cells and beads are coming that's the way it encapsulate the cell in a bead basically remember the bead this is micro particle it has all the uh, basically the primers and tags and once it tags to it then only you can recognize down the line so uh, here if you see First, you take, uh, you know, no, this is basically these are like stem single cell transcriptomes attached to micro particles. And there can be a miss. Like, for example, if you see once they are isolated, and I have shown you the isolation mechanism, it can be enzymatic, or here it is through the this droplets. So now if you see this is the only useful single cell this is the one of the problem where we miss the many cells so if you see here only this is it has captured with the bead cell this is empty droplet it has to be discarded and it has taken multiple it has to be also discarded because later you cannot find from this cell it has come so it misses now the miss rate is less earlier it was high so that's the way the in the droplets basically you want to get this attached this transcriptome to this which has the primers and like if you see here and that's the way it is catched and something you miss it is missed 